let's say you are given the following f of x is equal to let's say x squared plus x okay that's an equation of a graph and they say please find the first derivative using first principles what you'll do is to go back to that formula where is it now that formula there you always start with that formula when they say first principles so you're going to say the first derivative is equal to the limit of h tends to zero f of x plus h minus f of x over h happy happy now you'll notice that I have not used the notation M anymore. So far, in the lessons we had before, I've been referring to M all the time. Right there, and even there, I've been referring to M. Now I don't use the symbol M anymore, I use the F of X nota notation with an apostrophe. Okay. Okay, that's very important. You cannot use the symbol M anymore because we will actually not be working out the gradient um, between two points and M is the symbol for the gradient between two points okay okay you understand that so you need to remember to not use the symbol M but to use F apostrophe X or G apostrophe X or H apostrophe X or whatever the name of your original equation was okay Okay, but now, Jason, take a look at the fact that we have f of x. That part of the equation for first principles we already have. It's given to us. Okay. What we don't have is f of x plus h. However, it's a simple matter of working it out. So we're replacing the x with x plus h there and then we'll be doing the same there and there so we will be getting f of x plus h is therefore x plus h squared plus x plus h do you agree yeah I've just replaced all the x's with x plus h that's all yeah okay Right, and then I multiply the brackets out and I'll get x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus x plus h. Okay, nothing I can add there. But that then is that part of the formula. Still with me? Alright. Yeah. Alright, now just a tip. Okay, just a tip at this point, I just need to interrupt myself. Always put your f of x. They will have to give you f of x. You'll never find a question about first principles where you are not given f of x. In other words, that part of the formula. Okay, if they don't give you that, you can't proceed. It's as simple as that. But my tip to you is always put your f of x in brackets. And you'll see why in a second. Okay. Right. Okay. And then we're going to take that formula. We're going to say limit of h tends to zero. F of x plus h, we said, is that whole thing there. So it is x squared plus yeah. 2xh plus h squared plus x plus h. All right, that's that part of the formula. Are you happy? Yeah, I'm happy. Minus f of x, which is that. And all of this yeah, okay. of h. Do you agree? Yeah, I agree. Okay, then we just need to simplify 
above the line. It will be x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus x plus h minus x squared minus x all over h. You must tell me if I go too fast, Jason. No, 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 it's perfect. Okay, now at this point, all the terms, now listen carefully to this tip. All the points, or all the values, sorry, all the values in your numerator that do not contain h should cancel out. So you'll see x squared cancels with x squared, and x cancels with x. Okay. All right? Which will then leave us with an expression only containing h's above the line, which means we can actually take h out as a common factor. So we will get 2x plus h plus 1. Do you agree? Yeah, over h. And then over can't h. you uh, cross out the and h's? Yes, we can. And now all of a sudden, we do not have the problem of a zero below the line anymore. Because we've cancelled the h below the line. Yeah. So we can actually now make all the remaining h's equal to zero, which means we will be left with 2x plus 1. And that is the first derivative, 2x plus 1. And that's of okay. that original function. Alright, so it's a long process, but you actually have calculated the first derivative using the first principle method by remembering that f of x needs to be given to you, then you just went and calculated f of x plus h. Alright, you just went and calculated that and then substituted everything into that formula Make sure that all the terms which do not contain H cancel out, because that's like a double check for yourself. And then you take H out as a common factor, you divide it by the H below the line, make all the remaining H's equal to zero, and whatever remains is then your first uh, derivative. Okay, so it's not that hard. So is, the, is that calculus, is that the whole of that's calculus, or is that just like the first, first part? No, 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 no. That's just the very small but important first part. All right, we, okay. I have said to you along the way that calculus is all about the gradient of the tangent, and more specifically, where the gradient of the tangent is equal to zero. But now, obviously, we need to find the gradient of the tangent. How do we find the gradient of the tangent? We find the first derivative because that um, formula there, 2x plus 1, is now a formula for the gradient of the tangent. So it's no longer, where did I write that sentence? Let me just get that for you again. All right, I gave you that sentence. I said the gradient of the tangent is another word for the first derivative. Now we're expanding that slightly. We're saying that the first derivative is a formula for the gradient of the tangent very important. It's a formula for the gradient of the tangent. So in other words, if you look at that graph that we had up there, that might be a parabola. Let's say it's a parabola like that. Now obviously, that parabola would have a gradient there, 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 and there for the tangent, which is going to be different for each point. Do you agree? Yeah. But each of those points has an x value, and that x value can be substituted in there, and that will actually then give us the, the gradient. So each point, yes, each point has another gradient for the tangent in that specific point, but we have a formula to find the gradient for each point, and that formula is the first derivative. So you need to be able to find the first derivative in order to find the formula for the gradient. And once you've found that formula for the gradient, you can then proceed to calculus and what it is actually all about. Okay, all right, so all can right. I just put that in perspective for you again? 
the, the, the first derivative is a tool which allows you to get to a formula which you can then apply in the question that you want to solve. So it's like an intermediate intermediary step. You, you go and you find the first derivative so that you can come back to the table with some kind of a formula which you can then take forward again. 